the ugly truth about the construction industry. Today's video, I've got very easy drawings to make sense of the things that you might not know about the industry. And like I say, the ugly truth of what actually goes on. So if you're in the industry, you relate to some of this stuff. If you're new to the industry, you might not know some of this stuff. Now, number one, ultimately in this industry, shit rolls downhill. So this is my nice little turd. This is the hill and it is only going one way. Now, what do I mean by that? In this industry, you have got giants that do massive contracts. And if they get messed around, if they don't get paid, they pass that on to their subbies, subcontractors, the companies their subcontractors work out to, and then those subcontract companies are then gonna pass that on to the people on the ground who don't get their money, they don't get paid for their day's work. Because ultimately, there was always people working physically bloody hard on site everywhere you, everywhere you go. Every job relies on a pair of hands, fitting, digging, installing, making things look good and perform as a building. And shit does roll downhill, unfortunately. It's not ideal. And you've got to be very, very aware of who you are working for. Who is your client? Are they genuine? Are they going to pay you? Are they in a good credit position? Because shit will roll downhill. And the minute someone doesn't pay you, you're in trouble. The minute that the spec changes at the top of the client as well, it's gonna end up being someone else's problem on site. It's very difficult to manage, and that's why a lot of people struggle with the industry, is managing that piece in the middle. Because ultimately, a client at the top dictates what's being done. And it's got to filter down into the subcontractor doing a good job, doing it at the right cost, doing it in the right time, which we'll get onto. And ultimately, that's going to feed into guys at the bottom getting that work done. So you've got to be very aware all the time. Are you managing the client correctly? Because otherwise, it's going to create a lot of issues. Shit does roll downhill. Number two, the industry is corrupt. The industry is full of bribery. You will have seen this with things like COVID, government contracts being given out to certain people in certain positions because they're in that certain position and they can do things. This goes on a lot. Jobs get passed on a lot because someone else has got inside knowledge on the price. And a lot of the times people have already won the jobs before tendering because they've got an inside man, they've got an inside person or a nod has been given to someone else. So it's going to be theirs. This happens a lot. Now, you can try and pretend it doesn't, but it does happen a lot. It's just the way of the world. And like any industry, this will happen. If someone's got insider information and they can earn a few quid on the side of it, they will. Most people are corrupt in this sort of world, in this position. It goes on a hell of a lot. And it happens, like I say, at government level, the people that we should trust to run the country. And it happens at the very bottom of someone giving out a £2,000 job. It's their workplace or it's it's a friend they know or something like that. They've got an in on something. Corruption goes on everywhere. Bribery goes on everywhere. It's just how it is. Then, number three. Mismanagement of time is the biggest killer to the industry. And this happens a lot. What does a client do? They say, right, it's a 12-week job. I want it done in six. Unrealistic expectations get put on contractors all the time. And the contractor has to manage that educate the client and work to those parameters. And I've done this a lot of times, I've taken on jobs that you know are going to be incredibly difficult to get over the line in the time frame. A lot of times you do it and you pull out a miracle out of, out of the hat, but a lot of times you can't deliver on it and then the client starts saying to you, well, you said you were going to do it. And it's like, well, not really, because you set unrealistic expectations at the beginning. We've done everything we possibly can to do that. And it's not good enough. But the minute you say you're going to do it, that's all the client cares about. That's all they're going to hold you to. And it creates a lot of issues and it really creates substandard work, which is not ideal. You don't want to be doing things in a rush that is not good enough. And these are the pressures that get put on by, even again, by things like contracts and deadlines and timelines of spending budgets. It can lead to this, which is a massive risk to the industry. Um, and it's substandard materials as well. So you've got two labour and materials because of just the pressures of time. Get it done now. And this happens a lot. 
customer phone you because I want you to start next week, I want you to start now, I want you to get ahead and you can't even get the materials in that time frame but you end up doing it because you're doing a good deed to get the job done and get the job over the line and it can be incredibly stressful and it's, it's, it's just a massive problem in the industry. The amount of times I've had to shop around, buy things from abroad, go abroad, drive up north, send someone up north hundreds of miles away to pick up a material to get a job done in timeline happens a hell of a lot. Number four, the risk. It's a dangerous industry. You probably all remember the things like Grenfell Tower, which is a tower block of apartments that caught fire by the cladding. It still goes on, you know, people that are older understand the risks of asbestos and things like that and things that we breathe in. And this is a massive problem, you know, there's things like MDF now, which people are trying to clamp on down, where they don't want to take MDF as waste, where I certainly was cutting that up as a, as a very young man and a young person, I'm sure a lot of you have been around this as well. Insulation, we're breathing that stuff in. Something's probably going to come out. You know, years ago, the big thing was asbestos. That was the thing that ended up killing a lot of people by working with asbestos, lagging around pipes, and it was used everywhere, used everywhere in buildings. Don't do that anymore. I'm convinced that MDF or insulation is probably going to be the thing of our generation that's going to get us when we're older. But then it's too late. And again, no one talks about this. No, it all gets brushed under a carpet. You know, no one really is, is looking out for us. And that's why health and safety is a big factor now of making sure you've got lads on site wearing masks, wearing goggles, taking protective precautions to protect them best they can so they don't end up being 80 and going, oh shit, I've got a massive disease because MDF's like ruthless on your lungs. And equally the risk of doing work as well at height and things like that is where people can die and people do die. Construction is the biggest, highest risk industry there is. People die at work. It happens a lot. And the biggest cause of death is height, to work at height. So we've got a duty to protect our guys working for us, under us, so they're not making silly mistakes. Because this factor, the time factor, rushing to get things done, leads to making stupid mistakes here, taking stupid risks, and then accidents happen. And one thing you never want as a business owner is the burden of someone having a major accident on one of your sites, having that phone call, and then you having to phone that person's wife, girlfriend, family and say, well, they're in a coma or they're dead. And I know people this happened to, it's horrible. That will be the worst stress you can put on yourself in the world. It's just not nice for anyone. So this is a major problem in the industry, it really is. Then lastly, number five is the mismanagement of costs and the mismanagement of people. Letting all of this stuff get to you where you're working to ridiculous timelines. Maybe you've not spent the time to price the project right in the first place. So you're on the back foot before you've even started and you can't manage people properly because you can't train them and show them the job properly and, and form a proper plan of running the job. All because of these time pressures and everything else, you know, shit running downhill of, of, of pressures of clients and people putting high demands on you as a business owner. And this is really where the business fails. The business goes wrong at this stage. A lot of things have happened before that but it's once you've actually won jobs and you've got physical work on site, if you're not managing the cost, you're not tracking the cost on the jobs that you do, and you're not managing your people to adhere to the programme of how it's been cost, that's when businesses get in trouble and that's really where businesses just disappear, go bankrupt, run out of cash, and then you know before you know it, someone else is there climbing the hill, thinking they're going to be okay, and they run into all these troubles and all these different things. And this is just a few of the handful of things that I thought of today for this video of things that are wrong with the industry um, and things that it's really stuff that people just don't talk about. So I hope you guys can learn from this is look, look, always be aware who your client is. Don't let this shit roll down to you. That you're going to get in trouble. Always be aware of whenever your pricing works, are you actually got a chance of winning it or is someone else in bed with someone and you've got no chance of just being used as a pricing tool? Happens a lot. Be aware, suss out your competition and your, who else you're tendering against. Number three, if a client's putting real un, unworkable time limits on you and pressures on you, you're better off walking away from the job. You're better off putting your foot down and not setting yourself up for failure and going, we just can't do that and we're not going to do that because it's going to end up in trouble. You have to be resilient sometimes at saying no to the jobs. And then number four, don't take silly risks. You know, Protect your guys, protect yourself. Don't be in a rush just to get things done so you don't wear safety equipment and... You, you fit things quickly and not correctly, you're doing things wrong and you're putting guys at risk. Just don't do it because the cost of that going wrong will likely wipe you out. 
it'll be the end of the game. A bit like Monopoly, you don't pass go and collect £200, you're out, you're in jail. Don't take the risk, it's just too stupid. And lastly, always track your costs so you don't let the money slip away from you and always check in with your people. Don't expect them just to get on with it and make it happen. You've got to manage them, you've got to check in on with them and you've got to track the progress of the jobs that you run so that you know that you're safe. And if you do that, you're going to be in a lot better position and build a, a, a better business. So I hope that's been useful, guys. Some ugly truths in the industry. If you'd like some help in your business, there is a link below this video for 30 days of free business mentorship. It's an email a day with practical help and advice. A bit like this video, say it how it is. Nice and easy. Click it, check it out, and I'll see you on the next video.